Good morning, everyone. I'm Olivia Holas for Boca Magazine, and it's time for a coffee break with our friends at Jed Lawyers. We are joined by guest J. Albert Johnson, senior, senior trial counselor at Jed Lawyers. Al, it's great to see you. It's been a while since we've had a Facebook Live. It has, and um, happy holidays to you, Olivia, uh, and Merry Christmas uh, to everyone from uh, Boca Raton, Florida, otherwise known as Paradise. And to our Jewish friends who have just celebrated Hanukkah, uh, I hope they had a great, great, great uh, holiday uh, in Hanukkah. So we here at um, Jed Lawyers are very, very busy this time of year. And we're busy because everyone else is busy. Everybody is doing something for the holidays somewhere. And it involves, unfortunately, it involves danger to many people. We have a great time. The, the holiday season in Florida and in Boca Raton is exceptional. The Christmas lighting is unusual. Uh, the events are uh, wonderful. Uh, we just finished the Boca Raton Street Parade, which is one of the best in the, in the country. And we're looking forward this weekend to the Boca Boat Parade, which is also wonderful. So there's a lot of things that everybody is going to be doing, and we're looking forward to a magnificent holiday season. There are a few things, though, that we ought to be mindful of during this season. First, traffic. We know that traffic increases um, tremendously during the holiday season here in Boca Raton. And especially this year, it seems to most of the people in my office, at least, that uh, traffic is unusually heavy. Mm -hmm. Now that presents problems. First, people are very anxious to get where they're going. They don't wanna be stuck in traffic. And often they take chances. And because of the miscreants in traffic uh, who drive crazy, uh, and because of the fact that everybody's in a hurry to get places, often there are accidents. Mm -hmm. uh, the highway patrol calls them fender benders. Well, Sometimes they're much more serious than that. And uh, that's what we see at Jed Lawyers. We handle a great many serious personal injury cases arising out of the, um, the, the rush during the holiday season. So we wanna just touch a little bit about uh, driving carefully, what you should do when you're driving at this time of year and what you should do if you have the misfortune of having an automobile accident. First, drive carefully, of course. That goes without saying. Uh, if you have to get somewhere in a hurry, please, it can wait. Mm -hmm. Just take it easy. Secondly, it is not unknown to have heavy showers, rain showers during this time of year. And if those rain showers are such that you can't see, the visibility is limited, pull over to the side of the road. Don't drive as we often see on 95 when visibility is limited, people going 70, 80 miles an hour with, with absolutely no visibility at all. It makes no sense at all and leads to sometimes tragic loss of life. So we wanna be very, very careful about, about weather, which can occur here uh, with, with, with showers during this time of year. Secondly, don't go too fast, don't speed. It goes without saying. Third, make sure the equipment in your car is what it ought to be. Lights, uh, headlights, that your windshield wipers are adequate, that they clear the windshield in the event that we have one of those sh showers. And by all means, make sure that your brakes and other operating equipment, uh, steering and otherwise, are in perfect working order. Because your very life and the life of those in your vehicle and the life of those around you are at stake. So you gotta be really, really careful that your equipment is what it ought to be. Most states have inspection requirements of motor vehicles to make sure the equipment is, is appropriate and proper. We don't have that here in Florida. We did for many, many years, we don't anymore. So you see some awful looking vehicles traveling our highways and that you can bet those vehicles are not adequately equipped with brakes, not adequately equipped with lights or or windshield washes and so forth. So we gotta be really careful 
to avoid those, those vehicles on the highway. Second, um, in, in Florida, we have a law that children must be placed in a, in a child seat. Uh, that's a law which wasn't in existence anywhere, many states a long time ago, but it is now. So make sure uh, that uh, your children are placed in the appropriate car seats for their age. Uh, it goes without saying, I'm sure you've seen it, I certainly have, cars go by with a bunch of kids in them, none of them are in car seats. It's uh, just waiting for a tragedy to happen, not to have a child properly seated and supported by straps in, the, in a motor vehicle. Really, really important uh, that that be done. Next, in Boca Raton, we, uh, we use a lot of bicycles. It's a great sport and it's a great exercise uh, for people here in Boca Raton, and we see a lot of bikes on the road. There is a new bicycle statute in effect in the state of Florida. And what it says is, it's very important to those in, in Boca Raton, it says that you may not ride two abreast. Bicyclists may not ride two abreast unless there's enough room. That means if the bicycle lane which is set out by, by painting is wide enough to accomplish two bicycles uh, side by side. Secondly, no motorist may come within three feet of a traveling bicycle. No motorist may come within three feet of a traveling bicycle. And at an intersection, if there's a group of bicyclists traveling on the highway, the motorcycle, the motor, the motor vehicles must let 10 of those people go by before proceeding. And probably more importantly, which we see every day when we travel our highways here in Boca Raton, you cannot, as a motorist, make a right turn. You cannot, as a motorist, make a right turn unless you have 20 feet, 20 feet between you and the nearest bicyclist, mm -hmm. 20 feet. So that's new laws here in Boca Raton. And Al, we actually talked about this new statute at uh, our last Facebook live chat. And I will have to say that um, some of my friends who are cyclists and we've had um, some of our followers reach out and said that they really found it so informative that they didn't even know about this new statute. So um, just really important information. Yeah, the reason I mentioned it again is because although we did mention it here, and although the newspapers and television gave it publicity, um, I have myself have made the observations on the highways that people are not complying with that new statute. Just not. Mm -hmm. They ride two abreast. Um, they ride in groups of bicyclists all over the highway. And uh, motorists absolutely make right turns in front of moving bicycles, uh, which are very close to them, which is a very serious cause. Of, of accidents and death on our highway. So it's really something that's very important, especially here in Boca Raton, where bicycling is, uh, is so uh, uh, important. It's a really important thing. The other thing that um, I think we ought to talk about is driving after drinking. Mm -hmm. Now, we live in a great, great, great society where we have fun together. Mm -hmm. And we enjoy each other. And we enjoy going out to restaurants, especially here in Boca Raton. And we enjoy having alcoholic drink or two uh, while we're at those restaurants or while we're at people's homes. To drive an automobile after drinking, even a small amount, raises serious questions about the ability of the individual driving. I often say to people who ask, um, I was a police officer for many years before I became a lawyer. And I often say to people, even a thimble full of booze might affect the operation of your motor vehicle. But one thing is sure, even a thimble full of booze and the attendant odor of alcohol on your breath is gonna get you arrested if you get stopped or if you're in an automobile accident. So the best thing to do is don't drink and drive. Do not drink and drive. If you must drink when you go out, no problem with that whatsoever. Use an Uber right. or have a designated driver who doesn't drink. 
So the most important thing is don't drink and drive. At all. Exactly. At all. Yeah. Now, if you are unfortunate enough to be stopped after you've had some drinks, then you have some serious things to think about. The first thing you want to do, obviously, is cooperate with the police. Always cooperate with the police. Whether you undertake to cooperate, for cooperate with the police to the extent of doing field sobriety testing or breathalyzer testing is going to be up to you and your lawyer to determine. So you, if you are stopped by the police after having uh, had some drinks and you're going to be charged, which you will be, then you want to contact your lawyer. And everybody here within my voice ought to have a lawyer who they can contact who is familiar with that type of law, criminal law, so they can make that call uh, in the event they're stopped so they can get the proper advice as to what to do under those circumstances. Of course, be cooperative with the police. Now, without alcohol, accidents happen. Accidents happen every day. Many of them do. Um, my office is uh, uh, equipped with a, a very large contingent of people who do nothing but handle personal injury cases. And this time of year, we are literally inundated with a number of claims for personal injury as a result of accidents which occur because of the negligence of one person or another. What to do if you're involved in an accident? If you're involved in an accident, of course, pull over to the right-hand side of the road. Pull over to the right-hand side of the road if you can do so safely. Call 911 immediately. Call 911 immediately. No matter how slight the accident may seem, um, we know in the past that even though there is very little visible damage, often there were injuries occurring in a motor vehicle by passengers or by operators of motor vehicles, which really go unheralded at, at, in the first instance, but develop later. So call 911. Second, make sure you get all the information that you can at the time of the happening of the accident. That is, the name, address, and insurance company of the other operator of the other vehicle. Very, very, very important. Secondly, the name of the police officer who investigates. Third, very, very important again, not only uh, get the information that's there, but take pictures. Everyone has a cell phone now. Yeah. And all the cell phones are uh, capable of taking photographs. So make sure that you take pictures of the accident scene, make sure you take pictures of the vehicles involved, make sure you take pictures of the uh, damage, uh, which has uh, uh, been incurred as a result of the accident. And one last thing that people don't think about, take a look around, see if there are any fixed cameras in the area on businesses or on intersections uh, provided by the city or town or state. <laughs> so that you can later on tell individuals whether or not there ought to be a camera which recorded the happening of the events because sure as shooting, uh, there will be some argument about who caused the accident. So make sure of those three things. Call 911. Get all the information you can and especially note in the area whether or not there are any cameras available so that they can be used later on. Now, if you're in that accident, and if you feel injured, absolutely avail yourself of EMS. The police will call the EMS. They'll come to the scene. If necessary, take you to the hospital. Really important. And last but certainly not least, last but certainly not least, call your lawyer immediately. Let him know. Let the law firm know. Let a law firm which has experience in property damage case, property damage and personal injury cases, such as Jed Lawyers, um, exactly what happened. And let the lawyers make the determination as whether or not as to whether or not a claim ought to be made and whether or not you are seeking the appropriate medical attention, which is of course the very first thing you want to think about, is not claims, uh, not, not money as resulting from accidents, and not lawyers. And but 
your personal health. So those things are very, very important. Probably in that order. 911, cooperate with the police, take photographs, get all the information you can, and call a law firm specializing in property damage, in personal injury cases such as Jed Lawyers. Very, very, very important. Now, I mentioned before the fact that we go to restaurants, and especially here in Boca Raton, we have some of the finest restaurants um, in the country right here. So it's not unusual any given night to find many, many, many people congregating in restaurants mm -hmm. where alcohol is served. Really, really important. Don't drive after drinking, number one. Number two, people go to each other's homes and they have alcohol. Very, very, very important that you as a homeowner never let anyone leave that house if they've had too much to drink. How do you know? Common sense. Common yeah. sense. If you observe someone who you think may have had too much to drink at your home, call Uber um, or arrange for transportation for that individual. Don't ever let them drive out of your home because not only do they endanger their lives and the lives of others, but they endanger you. They endanger your pocketbook because liability follows. If you own a home or if you rent a home or you lease a home and someone leaves your house after having had too much to drink and gets in an accident, you're responsible. You have responsibility, which goes back to what we call dram shop cases. It means that if you serve someone too much alcohol and they get in an accident, and God forbid someone's killed, you bear responsibility to wow. the extent that you serve those people alcohol. And that's not something we, you know, I think think of uh, when you're hosting a, a social gathering at home. That's not something that you really, you know, realize. So um, sca it's scary. You really have to pay attention. The, the, another thing follows to homeowners, Olivia. If you own a home, and if you have minor children, it, it is often that you have parties allowed by your children in your home. Mm -hmm. Perfectly okay. It's great. It's great to have that family atmosphere so that your kids can invite other kids into your home. But if you make alcohol available to them, watch out. It's a violation of the criminal law, number one. And number two, if someone's injured as a result of having too much to drink at your party, as a party instigated by your kids, you're responsible. Recent case in Massachusetts, a state police captain and his wife were recently indicted for manslaughter because they allowed kids at a party, teenagers, to drink too much alcohol and a kid died as a result of it. Oh. Kid died as a result of it, dove in a pool, hit his head, and, and was killed. The parents, parents charged with manslaughter. Now, not only criminal sanctions, manslaughter or negligent conduct, but also civil liability. So be real careful. Number one, don't let your minor children drink booze. Don't let it happen. That's don't idea, do it. Period. Like, that's not even. No, no. Yeah. But if, if you have kids in your home, you better monitor them very, very carefully because not only are you responsible if you serve them alcohol, which goes without saying, but you're also responsible if you allow them with your knowledge to bring alcohol into that party and someone is injured or, or unfortunately someone loses their life as a result of the ingestion of that alcohol. Really, really, really important to watch out for minors at parties. The, um, Real important thing at home also, in addition to uh, parties, is providing adequate equipment for holiday lighting. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we read about it all the time. Uh, we all like to decorate our homes at Christmas time. We have Christmas trees. Sometimes the Christmas trees are real, sometimes they're, uh, they're not. And a real Christmas tree, if it gets dry, it can go up in flames real fast and burn your house down. So you got to be real careful not to let trees, real Christmas trees, dry out in the house 
and the lighting that's on the trees and around your house, make sure it's adequate lighting. Make sure that the wires are not um, uh, tangled or, or old or, or, or misplaced. Really important. We see every year, every year after Christmas, terrible stories about people's homes which are burned down, people who are killed or injured as a result of bad wiring or bad Christmas, uh, or bad Christmas lighting. Let me hit on one other thing. When you are driving your automobile, when you secure it, when you stop, make sure you remove the keys. Now, you know, people laugh when you say that. Who would not remove the keys? They do it every day. They leave the keys in the car. Happens at shopping malls. Happens at people's homes. Every single night in Boca Raton. Every single night in Boca Raton. And I say this without fear of contradiction. There are groups of people going around, bad guys, going around looking for keys in cars. And they steal the cars. Or they steal the contents of the cars. And one thing people never think about. If you leave a key fob in the car, it will start the car. But if you leave a garage door opener in the car, it will open your garage door. Yeah. And if it opens your garage door, you may well get either a burglary or, God forbid, a home invasion. I mean, I'm really serious about that. No, I know. I know. It's, it's true. And I always see alerts, you know, in the neighborhood every day that, you know, a car has, there's been a car theft or things being stolen. So that's something that I always make sure that I do. I always lock my, my car because I could be upstairs in my, in my bedroom and I think, oh, wait a minute, I didn't lock my, my car and I will make sure to do so. So, yeah. The garage door opener thing is very important. People don't think about that. Yeah. If you have a garage door opener in the car. It opens your house to a bad guy. Just last night, just last night, an individual left a restaurant, not here in Boca Raton, was followed by bad people to his home who invaded his home with him, uh, caused him serious personal injury and stole everything of value in the house. So when you leave a restaurant, uh, hopefully not in Boca Raton, yeah. Be be careful. Take a look around. Be very careful about your circumstances, where you are, and who might be around. Uh, it's a it's a it's a terrible way of life that we've 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 sunk into, where we have to be aware of those things, but we really do. And a lot of you know a lot of Boca residents live in gated communities, but these car thefts also happen. You know, things being stolen also happen in those gated communities. So you know, this doesn't just go for non-gated communities. And when you're visiting a restaurant, most of us know where the bad areas are, where they're not. Yeah. Um, most of us know not to park in areas which are unlighted. Most of us know where uh, we should not park where there are no other individuals of, of, uh, of a public safety nature. There are cities and towns right here close to Boca Raton where they have valet service only. And the reason is because not only are there no parking spaces, but it's dangerous to park behind the restaurants or in areas which are unlighted because of individuals who might seek to rob or otherwise injure you. So. Those are important things that you ought to consider, important things that, um, that, uh, that uh, we, we must consider during this holiday season. One last thing. If you are going to be driving during the holiday season, and we all do, make sure your insurance is adequate. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have sufficient uh, insurance to cover you in the case of an accident. $100,000 to $300,000 limits, that is $100,000 per individual, $300,000 per accident, is a minimum coverage that people ought to have in, in, in Boca Raton, in Florida. In addition to that, and I add this every time I speak, it is very important here in Florida, especially that you have uninsured motorist coverage on your automobile. That is, if you are struck, God forbid, by an individual who has no insurance at all, or who has little insurance, or, or very little insurance, that you cover yourself. It is very inexpensive, 
You should tell your insurance agent you want it and never, never, never sign a declination of uninsured motorist coverage. So having all of those things in mind, there's two other things I'd like to mention where people can really enjoy the holidays. Holiday lights, trade winds park. I've seen the best light display I could ever think of on Sample Road. That okay. brought, really good. And if you want something to do with kids who are visiting or people visiting from, not only kids, but people visiting from other states, Lion Country Safari, yeah. outstanding, outstanding yeah. in, in Wellington. So with those things in mind, I'd like to, on behalf of Jed Lawyers, um, a full service law firm, we do everything. We do property damage cases. We do disaster case relief cases. We do, if your pipe bursts in your home, we help you get the insurance uh, assets to your home. Uh, we represent uh, many, many, many uh, hospitals and, uh, and medical care facilities and claims against insurance companies. And we certainly do a great deal of personal injury cases uh, here in Boca Raton. So we're ready, willing, and able. We wanna wish everybody a very, very happy and healthy Christmas and a happy and healthy new year. You know what? all great information. It's not to put a damper on the wonderful things that happen during the holiday season, but really good things to keep in mind to keep us all safe, healthy, and happy. So Al, thank you so much. I know you have grandkids, so I'm sure you're having so much fun with them during this season. Um, and it's always so nice to chat with you. And we really appreciate all of your wealth of information. You, have, you are an encyclopedia. You have so much knowledge and we're so thankful that you share that with us. So thank you. Thank you, Olivia, for giving us the opportunity to come on. Thank you. Well, nice seeing you. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Uh, we do have another Facebook Live chat scheduled for next Thursday. So until then, just be well, celebrate the holiday season safely, and we will see you then. Bye.